How's everyone today? Studoc here. Welcome back to more GOAT format dual commentary. We got Wind's Wept Puppy here at 100 going up against Asui Kitsum at 439. Again, the ratings don't really mean anything because this isn't rated, obviously. But oh, we get to see the thing that everyone loves to do in GOAT format dual commentary. And that's set a T for Timmy Turner. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that reference is still going strong, of course, and wow, here's a random pyramid turtle normal summon. Gonna summon it before you actually activate the normal to cross out, and that snipes the magical merchant. And it looks like Wins is actually playing multiple copies of Mag magical merchant in his deck, so wow. Be able to get rid of both of those, and this pyramid turtle will poke for 12. And that gets met with a Sakuretsu armor. Alright, I mean, might as well. It is a floater. It doesn't get the effect when it's destroyed by card effects. Uh, I mean, I'd say that's a pretty solid Sakuretsu armor. And Kit's Tomb is just going to set one card face down. And now it's back to Puppy's turn. He just set a card. And both these guys just setting one card at a time here. Oh my god. And apparently Kit's Tomb is a girl. Shuffled her deck. Oh my god. Seriously. Not the first time we've casted a girl. On my channel, of course, but you know, doesn't happen too often. Obviously, I'm just taking this girl's word word for it. Here is a lot of people like to lie on on the internet and stuff, especially on this website. So there's a dust tornado played on a torrential tribute, and then Call the Haunted's gonna revive this pyramid turtle, and that will finally poke for 12. And the first life points lost in this duel will go down for Puppy. He'll lose 12, bringing him down to 68. Going to chain the ring of destruction to the heavy storm. Might as well. I mean, you're already winning the duel, so get the burn for an extra 12. I mean, yeah, you got to burn yourself, but I mean, it doesn't really matter too much when you're already winning the duel. Now, if you're already losing the duel, then probably wouldn't have seen that ring of destruction get chained to the heavy storm. But I mean, still nice. Here's another T set from Wind's Wet Puppy, though. Or Wept Puppy. I, can't, I keep thinking it's Wet Puppy. <laughs> Let's picture some Wet Puppy coming in. After like a rainy day or something. He's like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to flip some of that Magician of Faith. I'll add back the Heavy Storm. And this will attempt to attack for 300. And Kit's Dream is going to lose that. Bringing her down to 65 here. Another set monster from Puppy. And let's see what Kit's dream has got up her sleeve. With six cards to work with. No, you got the Heavy Storm. So you're not going to be setting a whole bunch more traps. So let's see. Get to see Sinister Serpent Normal Summon. You're actually going to Kamikaze with Mission and a Faith? Wow. Don't see that every day. You're actually going to Book a Moon? Wait. Kind of surprised he didn't Book a Moon is Magician of Faith. I mean, I guess this has 250D, so he wants to attack over it. But attacking over the, or the Sinister Serpent doesn't really do that much. Kids to him just add it back to her hand and just resummon it in Kamikaze again. But I mean, I guess if you want an old one to cross out it still technically a neg one you just wasted your book of moon yeah i mean you wasted two cards to get past it technically but let's really be afraid of that sinister serpent so the magician of fate is going to attack for 300 and looks like the dd warrior lady is going to kill one of the scapegoat tokens as we get to see a scapegoat activated during this battle phase so, Kit's Doom does not want to take the 15 direct damage from the DD Warrior Lady. And in Phase 2, there's a Metamorphosis activated. Kill off the Magician of Faith for Thousand Eyes Restrict. This will eat up one of the tokens, but again, that doesn't really accomplish a whole lot. Seems like Kit's Doom has her own Metamorphosis. You can go for that. You can eat up the Thousand Eyes Restrict. It's like, heard you like Thousand Eyes Restrict, so I'm going to eat up your Thousand Eyes Restrict. <laughs> Just like when 101 first came out, it's like, heard you like 101, so I'm gonna 101, you're 101, you're 101. Oh my god. Happened all the time. So 101 and Exiton Knight first came out, and those were like rank 4s that no one's ever seen before. Like, that was before Utopia the Lightning, that was bo before Tornado Dragon, that was before the Bagutsa, that was before all that fun stuff. So when 101 and Exiton Knight first came out, pretty much just was a staple to play two 101s. Oh yeah, and that was before Castell. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Everyone just played a whole bunch of 101, so you just summon the first 101, then it get eaten up by a 101, and then I'd play another 101, and that would eat up the other 101. It was just crazy. Wait, shouldn't you only have one token? I eat a 300, yeah. 
I was about to say, how would you have one token that you would have one token if um, Kit's Tomb didn't take this 300? As you can see, Kit's Tomb took this 300. So you, she obviously activated the scapegoat after the direct attack of that Magician of Faith on the previous turn. But wow, looks like none of these guys have anything here. Of course, Thousand Eyes is the only monster that can attack. And this has zero attack because the token has zero attack. So we're just in a stalemate here. And both these guys just pass in turn. Kids tune top decks into a delinquent duo. So I'll pay a grand to snipe a card out of that hand. Of course the die lands on six. So you got to re-roll. And now the die lands on five. Again, these dies tend to always land on five and six. Just in my previous experience. You know, I've had a lot of experience on this website. A whole bunch more experience back on DN, of course, that was the older website. Went five years strong. Actually, five years and two months strong. And then there's an eight month period of just no DN slash dueling book. And again, that eight month period was just a terrible eight months as no one knew if this website was real or fake. And there were people confirming it was fake. And I was just frustrated and I wanted answers. So I said it was fake just to get some answers and it seems like right after I said that I, stuff started to happen we actually got some answers of this website being real but yeah having a whole bunch of flash flashbacks up in this video so Sukiyomi's gonna set the thousand eyes restrict that's really good because now that Sukiyomi and the DD warrior lady can attack both those tokens main phase 2 you might as well just reflip some of the thousand eyes restrict since you already got the Sukiyomi guaranteed to go back to your hand so you can just reset it and then attack but very surprised that Kitsu has nothing here. I mean, he got seven cards to work with, and she hasn't really done anything. You know, that scapegoat accomplished nothing. It didn't have a monomorphosis or anything. So you literally just use that scapegoat for pure defense, which is not what you really want to be doing in goat form. And as you can see, again, just the suboptimal play is just going to be sitting one card face down. We know Puppy has the Heavy Storm in hand, but wow. So it looks like it's just going to be Sukiyomi... DD Warrior Lady beat down here. I didn't know you could flip summon during the end phase. Wow, I get to see that clutch flip summon during the end phase. See that? Like, wow, man. I didn't know you could flip summon during the end phase. He totally flipped some of that Thousand Eyes Restrict during the end phase. <laughs> it's a blind MST playing on the bottomless, and that's just going to be wrap. So, some very suboptimal draws, I guess, from Kids Doom, but at least we're going to go into game number two. So, oh, uh, yeah, son, get extra. Fun today, and that was some extremely fast side deck. And just assume these guys don't even have a side deck. Like, wow. So here we go, game numero dos. Kid student decides to go first. Obviously, you got the first turn draw, and pretty much whenever you're in a format where you got the first turn draw, you 99.99999% of the time want to go first. And if you're playing like some sacky deck, like Final Countdown or Chain Burn, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. I know Heretics, when Heretics first came out, people decided to go second with them, but then realized that wasn't the best of things to do. So Heretics, you know, technically came out when wind-ups were tier 1, and he didn't just want to get wind-up looped for no reason. Oh yeah, and he also didn't want to get first turn Logia set 4, first turn Dolka set 4, His Dino Rabbit was also tier 1. So, yeah, people <laughs> decided to give up on that idea, and they're like, no, F that, I'm not going to go first anymore. Or I'm not going to let you go second anymore when Heratix first came out. And that was pretty much it. And then once the first turn draw got got changed, a lot of people, I mean, a whole, there's a whole lot more strategy in deciding whether you go first or second. Like, it's not even funny. So there's the Graceful Charity activated. going to draw three, pitch a Sangin along with the bottomless. DD Warrior Lady summoned. Kids Doom will lose 500 life points and the Sanding will get banished, so no search for you. Min phase 2. Again, this die loves to land on 6. It's not even funny. Like, holy smokes, that die. Why does it keep landing on 6? Swear to God, it's not just a coincidence. Trust me. You want to go rewatch all the hundreds of videos of my channel previously? I mean, go ahead and you'll just see how that die lands on 5 and 6 just way too often. Alright, so Delinquent Duo is going to snipe out a Ring of Destruction, then Kitsune decides to pitch her own Ryo Koki here, which isn't really the best of card choices, I guess. I mean, it's just one tribute clogging in your hand, but mm, I don't know. 
So here's Graceful Charity from Kids Tune and draw three and discard a creature swap along with a Vampire Lord. So no one's really getting a plus off their Graceful Charities. Don't really have that synergy with the Knight Assailant or the synergy with the Sinister Serpent. Unfortunately, you get to see the scapegoat activated. Now we get all these black tokens up in here. Like he had the custom tokens to make them black. Graceful Charity tokens. Oh my god. I'm assuming this is some sort of a glitch, but you can see the clutch graceful charity tokens. Interesting. And there's metamorphosis from puppy that's gonna eat up the breaker, and this thousand eyes is gonna poke for 16. Unless there is mirror force. Too strong. That limited mirror force coming in clutch. Top deck swiftly into a book of life. Gonna remove from play the sand again. I like to say that was probably the best choice of removing from play. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, that's a call to Haunted. I mean, even bringing back a Thousand Eyes is still decent, though. But, you know, Sangin technically is a floater. But, what do you know, there's another Metamorphosis. And here comes another Thousand Eyes Restrict. So, this will poke for two grand, and Kitstune will go down to 55. Again, very low on life points for Kitstune, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Brace yourselves, boys. Brace yourselves. <laughs> Dang, these duelists are so black. That Stew Dog 8 became Stew Dog 8. <laughs> I know, right? I don't know what it was up with those black tokens, man. Like, seriously, that just came out of nowhere. And it looks like for the second straight duel, Kit Stune is going to be using... Her scapegoat for defense here. Not a, it's not on the mental porphysis. That's just a pure defensive scapegoat. Can buy you some turns, thankfully, but eventually you're just going to lose this duel. Now, thankfully, Thousand Eyes is the only monster that can attack when it's face up on the field. But, mmm. Just not looking that good for Kid's Noom here. Desperately need a top deck of metamorphosis and then eat up your opponent's Thousand Eyes. Now, that'll put in some work. Okay, so skill drain activated upon the attack declaration of a thousand eyes. So now this will have its effect negated. It'll just be a zero zero attack monster. I'll attack right into the token, which is also zero zero. And I mean, you can't switch this to defense since you already declared an attack, of course. And let's see what Kitstune's gonna be doing here. Again, it hasn't really been doing much this entire match, unfortunately. Seems like this isn't the most standard of GOAT format decks. Having the zombie synergy, or purposely playing Book of Life, and Ryo Koki, some other zombies, hopefully up in here. We can hope, I guess. Well, let's see what it's going to be, Kids Doom. Seems like for the first time I'll match... We're just sitting here, just sitting here staring at each other. We got Ghost Ogre just staring in the Penguin Soldier's eyes, like dang son. And unfortunately, still nothing, man. So, Sukiyomi Normal Summoned. And that will not bounce back to the hand during the end phase, thanks to the skill drain, of course. Kinda surprised he didn't flip summon this, like I don't care what this is, might as well just flip summon it. Try to wrap up this duel, but mm, there you go. Gets met with noblemen, and I guess I see the logic. If you have like a Jinzo, maybe you contribute for Jinzo next turn. Ops not to switch the token to attack. I, mm, I don't know about that creature swap. I really just do not understand that creature swap. You know, your opponent's gonna give you a thousand eyes. And you're literally just right back to where we started here. And now you got an attack position mod. It doesn't even bother to switch the Thousand Eyes to defense. Like, I don't know. You're playing like a girl, Kiss Doom. Like, God, no offense, but seriously. <laughs> don't really agree with that play. Like, I'm just such a pointless creature swap. You're literally in the same exact spot you were. Like, I just don't understand the point of that whatsoever. And his enemy controller U is going to tribute off. 
Thousand Eyes to take control of the Tsukiyomi to the end of the turn? I don't really know about that. But sure, I guess. Book of Life's gonna revive Vampire Lord, and finally, Kids Doom can hope that there's nothing back there, and apparently, there's no set cards back there of decency. I was expecting to see that Sakuretsu armor, you know, but nope, there's Snatch Steel and Jinzo. Not gonna be game, you can't tribute off the token, thankfully. That would have been game if you could tribute off the token for the Jinzo, but. Gonna snatch steal the frickin' Vampire Lord, then tribute off the Vampire Lord for Jinzo. Exiled Force will get its effect. No, I believe this does still get around Skill Drain though. Then all like Rescue Rabbit gets around Skill Drain. Other stuff gets around Skill Drain. But it doesn't matter anyway because the uh, Jinzo is obviously on the field, so the Skill Drain is negated. And there's that Premature Burial activated. So now we know every card that. Kid's Doom has, and it seems like for the third time in this duel, we're just going to revive that Vampire Lord, and like, dang. Reviving that Vampire Lord, but it's really not doing much, and you know, Wet Puppy has five cards to work with. God, I accidentally called him Wet Puppy again. That's what I'm seeing, I see W-E-T and then Puppy, so I just say Wet Puppy. But Wept Puppy. Again, still is the advantage technically here. Fortunately, that Morphing Jar is going to be doing nothing. Now let's see, there's Breaker Summoned. Gonna attack the Vampire Lord and upon the attack declaration, get to see the Clutch of Book of Moon used to set that. Back to Kid Stoon's turn and let's see. Set monster from her. Oh no, I'm gonna take it back. No take backs, just kidding. Mmm, that is. I would have liked to see that giant rat get set. That was not an optimal lightning vortex. I don't know what targets you have remaining in deck, I have absolutely no idea. But I would have really liked to see that giant rat get set, like, oh no. That lightning vortex was so terrible. The Tsukiyomi's gonna, ah, that's game, rip. Again, I, I think I would have liked to see that pyramid turtle get set as well, I, I'm just not agreeing with these plays, Kids Doom, like the lightning vortex was worthless, the creature swap was pointless. Even that Econ was bad, like what were you doing with that Econ, like tributing the monster, you could have just switched it to defense, you didn't even have to tribute the monster, you literally didn't even have to tribute the monster with that Econ. Ah, some very suboptimal plays from Kid's Doom here, but either way, the puppy gets the 2-0 victory, so, you know, I was rooting for the puppy the entire time, so I'm pretty happy, so, it looks like it was some form of a zombie deck in GOAT format. From Kit's Doom, and this looked pretty standard from Puppy. I mean, don't really see anything obscure here, just the standard stuff that Goat Foreman is known to be playing. And um, either way, that is the match. So, again, I would like to see that Pyramid Total got set. I would like to see the Giant Rat got set, the Lightning Vortex held on to. Like, mm, I, I don't know, man. But anyway, thank you all for watching this episode of Goat Format Dual Commentary. As always, we'll be back in a couple more weeks with another episode. Until next time, this has been Stew Dog. And I'm signing out.